Morning guys. I am actually here in Hawaii at a car show. This is kind of like uh, a holiday Toys for Tots, kind of a charity event, just like we did at Hoonigan just a couple weeks ago. You know, I'm a little, I'm a charity. I'm fine with. <laughs> The point is that everyone brings their cool cars. They bring a toy along with it, and all the people that want to come and see the cool cars, they have to bring a toy too. It's for the kids, and it's pretty much like the last big show of the year here in Hawaii. I was actually going to shoot this um, Torino. Unfortunately, he had kind of had an incident on the highway. But let's check on on this car. This thing is so cool. What's up? Hey, how are you doing? What's your hey. name? Lance. Well, nice to meet you, Lance. Nice to meet you, Larry. Your car is so clean. Oh, thank it's you. It's absolutely amazing. Unfortunately, you had a little bit of an incident on the highway today, huh? I did. Yeah? Unfortunately. What happened? I hit a dip. Damn! Woo! Coming in, and I guess I hit the pan, and all the oil just came out. I'm so sorry. I'm so... Good thing is it's going to be up and running soon, right? Right. Correct. <laughs> Correct. Cool. So. Tell me about it. What What is it? I don't even, I've never even seen one before. It's a 1973 Toyota Corolla, also known as a Chueno Sprinter. Ah. From, in Japan, from Japan. And it's right-hand drive. Yes. Yeah. So how did you get it here on the island? It was on a forum, Club 4 g a while back. Uh -huh. And I just decided to contact the sellers and then took, the, took a chance. It, I bet you it didn't look like this. Yeah, no, it didn't. I'm, I'm guessing it did. <laughs> but I took a chance. I mean, the guys, the, the guys that were bringing it over were nice, very nice. Yeah. So, you know, you got to feel them out. Yeah. And they seem yeah. like good guys. So, so it is, we started the process to bring it over from Yokohama, I believe. Let's check it out. It's so clean. I love it. I, Thank you. I mean, I'm a big fan of orange cars. You know, I have an orange 240Z that's actually getting restored right now. I, I mean, I can't believe how clean every single part of this car is. You could eat off of this thing. This, uh, what kind of motor is this? It's a 2TG. Unfortunately, Lance can't start it up today because the oil is completely drained out of the car. But I still wanted to show you guys this beautiful build and it's like true Hawaiian car culture, true Hawaiian style here. So have you always wanted to build one of these or? I've had Toyotas since I was 15 years old. So, I mean, it just goes from there. Very cool. So, was this all rusty when you got it or it was just completely stuck? It was rusty. It was rusty, but the bodywork and paint was very presentable. But under all that was, was bondo and rust and metal. I love it. The interior is so clean. I mean, where did you even get all these parts? Like the rear seats are the original seats. And then the front, two front skin, I had to get reupholstered. Well, I got the skins and I reupholstered it. Mm. Yeah. It's gotta be so fun to drive this thing, huh? It's fun, I wish I could drive it home. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> this thing is bleeding. And what kind of wheels are those? Hayashi Street, 13x9s. 175, 175 50s stretched over, 13x9 inch rims. <laughs> it's amazing that. 175? Yeah. How's that even possible? That is some serious stretch right there. Very cool. Well, thank you for showing me your car. I'm so sorry that, that uh, it's bleeding and <laughs> that you can't start it for me. I would, I would love to hear it, but uh, maybe next time. Yeah, thank you, so, Larry. Thank you. Nice meeting you. Yeah, nice meeting you too. Very cool. Love it. For me, I love all the old school cars, you know? So whenever there's a, a old school Volkswagen bug, I love checking them out. We got the owner here. What's up? Hey, how's it? What's your name? Alfred. Alfred. Well, thanks for bringing your beautiful, beautiful bug. Thank you. It's so awesome. Oh, that is so cool. Colors match the car, trailer max matches the trailer. <laughs> yeah, I just gotta put on the buses on them now. Yeah, that is so cool. I love that. A custom um, safari window arms on it. This is a very Hawaiian detail here. It's such a simple detail, but it's pretty cool. I like that. Well, thanks for showing me your car. Sure. Yeah, Hello. beautiful. What I like about this show is there's a little bit of everything here. There's old school Japanese cars, old school American cars, muscle cars. There's everything. It's kind of cool. It's a mixing pot. But this thing kind of stood out to me. Here's the owner here. What's up? Hey. What's your name? Uh, Noel. 
Dude, this thing, what is this thing? This thing is crazy. I, I know this is a Celica, but <laughs> it's like a Mad Max Hawaiian yeah. JDM kind of thing. Yeah, rat rodish sort of thing. What's your inspiration on this? Oh, movies. I love Death Proof, Mad Max, Death Race, just anything post-apocalyptic. What's under the hood here? Let's, let's pop this thing. What the hell is that? What is it? It's a 1UZ and uh, I put a Ford M112 Eaton supercharger on top. I mean, it's got the muscle car look. The only thing it was missing was the the muscle of it. What the? It, it. You, you, you can, you do. What is this supercharger out of? I don't even know what to say. What is it out of? The 2002-2003 Mustang SVTs came with supercharged. How did you fit it on here? And there's this guy in Canada that makes the manifold. He takes your lower intake, chops it up, and then puts a plate that'll have the supercharger on top. And he also makes like the throttle body conversions for it to keep the 1UZ throttle bodies. Those crazy Canadians. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Forgive me for asking, but what does the 1UZ come out of? Is it like a Lexus? The 1UZ that I picked was out of a SC400. Uh, what do you think it's putting out? Okay, this is where everybody tries to like uh, argue with me about. The stock 1UZ, I don't care what Wikipedia says, it's putting out like 200 horsepower at the wheels. <laughs> and then when you stick a blower on it, making like 8 PS7 to 8 PSI, I'm gonna go with like, 250 realistically right. and everybody's like, no way man no way that's still crazy 250 for this chassis what the heck this is really cool actually well thanks for bringing it yeah no problem man yeah and thanks for showing it off yeah of course you guys know that i love the weird and wonderful cars especially the cars i've never seen before at whatever show that i go to this one definitely i've never seen before what is this thing um, 82 Griffith convertible. What the? Okay, first of all, this is the owner. What's your name? Eddie. Eddie, thanks for bringing this weird thing. What? What is it? Um, it's a Toyota Corolla convertible. That's uh, I think it's uh, made by Griffith. One of a hundred. This it's so clean still. Well, it's kind of rough, but then you know, just gotta put some gre elbow grease in it and uh, made it to what it is today. Yeah, looks good. What is this here? This is the Holy Grail. Griffith Limited Edition for Toyota. Corolla convertible. I just can't believe that something like this existed and I never even knew about it. What the? Oh, I love these. <laughs> these 80s pictures are so good. I love it. Wow, and it's five speed? What the heck? It's pretty cool. So what's the actual car based off of? Um, It's the... Hardtop. The A1? T72 hardtop would okay. be, yeah, I have one at home too. Where did they actually modify it? In Japan? No, it came to the state as a hardtop, then Griffith, um, the dealership brought it to Griffith. They did the conversion and then brought it back to Toyota to sell it as brand new. Pop the hood on this thing. I want to see what kind of motor is in this. Oh, 3TC. Get all our numbers up there. 3TC. Basically, all I did was put cam, side draft, yeah. Single and just wow. clean up the engine bay, pretty much it. Five years I put in what, say 10,000 miles. You know, I go around the island, have fun with it. Thanks for showing me this. This is so weird. It's, uh, it's really cool to see something I haven't seen before. Very cool, thank you. All right, so you know me, I love drift cars. Can't stay away from drifting. So when I see a drift car, especially of this caliber with style, I have to talk to the owner. So we got the owner here, what's up? What's your name? What's up, Darian, Darian Otolo. This thing is <laughs> sick. It's pretty wild for sure. You drive this on the street like this? Drive it just like this, as is. Dude, that is- Coilovers and all. <laughs> what the, how is it, how do you, what the? There's no room at all. Like, <laughs> it's basically touching already. It's pretty wild. <laughs> I mean, this is pretty legit. Where does this even come from? So it's a full side exit, custom exhaust, um, full pie cut from the front back. It's 
Got about 50 hours of work in it. It actually bolts against my frame rail and it comes right out the side quarter panel in there. You can actually see it real well from the inside. Really? But uh, yeah, it's pretty, <laughs> it's pretty crazy. That is rowdy. Yeah. There's a couple of things that I really like about this yeah. build. Uh, the style, without a doubt, definitely, is, definitely. is just so important. And like, I, I haven't really seen too many Hawaiian drift cars. Oh, okay. Really the most uh, that I've been exposed to that is through Forrest Wang. Of course, you know, I've always loved his builds and Definitely. the first time he shipped his car over to the US, I actually had a chance to shoot it um, when he was competing in Top Drift for the first time. So we're actually at uh, the Leeward community, Com yep. Leeward Leeward community, community College, College yep. and this is actually where Forrest went to school. Exactly, yeah, he graduated here, his automotive program. I'm not sure exactly what year, but this is his hometown, it's where he's from. But you actually went to school here too. I went to school here, I graduated last year from the automotive program here at LCC. So yeah, it's just a work in progress that I've just been building about seven years of work and uh, five years of being in storage and it's finally out. So how many drift guys are there out here? Hon honestly, I mean, the scene here is, it's pretty, it's pretty well known. I mean, especially for just a small island, we have a, quite a big group of people that's in the drift scene. And it's, it's, it's pretty awesome how, how all of us come together, but it just sucks that the state doesn't really want to, you know, work with us because we have nowhere to actually, you know, put down the, put down the fun and, you know, actually, enjoy what we like to do. Give these guys a parking lot at <laughs> least. Thank you so much for showing us your yeah. street drift car build. It is- I appreciate you recognizing it. <laughs> it's so good looking. Appreciate it's too it, man. good looking. Hell yeah. I'm a sucker for Zs as you guys know. I have a 1970 240Z. This thing didn't really catch my eye per se. It's kind of a rust bucket, all right? It, it showed up and I'm looking at it and I'm like, oh, it's pretty cool but there's something special about it. And these guys are the ones responsible for it. We got Tim here, Tim Jr. and Tim, Tim Sr., right? This is absolutely insane. What the heck is this? It's a sleeper. This is the definition of a sleeper. What, what, what were you thinking? We had an extra turbo kit and we needed to put it on something. Yeah. So, so. That's a really, by the way, I love your shirt. <laughs> Does it run okay? Yeah, um, it's, it's kind of like having, uh, I guess, the rear mount turbo in a way. And what I ended up doing actually um, to increase the velocity of the airspeed going into the turbo, um, I stepped down from a two and a half inch pipe to a two inch pipe up to the turbo. And I might even go a little smaller to get more boost at a lower RPM, but right now we're getting enough boost, it's like maybe 3,500, it starts to come on, so it's but, not bad. But the crazy thing is from the outside, it looks completely stock. Yeah. I mean like 100% completely stock. We were trying to make it where we didn't, you know, we didn't have to cut the hood or put a hood scoop or anything like that, so it maintains that, that original look. Have you guys dynoed it? Oh, no, no, we actually, I, we just got the carburetor on yesterday. We took it for a test drive, the new carburetor that we just picked up. And yeah, we're trying, we're trying to get it ready for today or whatever, just maybe make it drivable and whatnot, so. Wow, what the heck? Let's hear this sucker. That's just too cool. What a cool little build. Thank you so much for showing me this. Oh, thanks for interviewing us. Yeah, that. yeah, very cool. For me, part of shooting this kind of show is, you know, you, you get the daily drivers, you get the just show cars, and you get these super clean builds like this Hako right here. 1971 four-door Skyline. Just absolutely beautiful built to perfection with the flair, with that Hawaiian style. And we got the owner right here. What's up, how are you? How's it? What's your name? Dean Pang. Dean, this thing is absolutely unbelievable. I love it so much. Just tell me about this thing. Well, basically it came from Japan as a standard silver hakosuka, uh, no flares, nothing, it was just plain Jane. And I took it to the next level. I created still flares. I added a carbon fiber hood. Uh, carbon fiber dash, triple Makuni carbs, and everything. Just did a complete rebuild on it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Triple Makuni carbs. Okay, pop the hood on this thing. I just want to see. I just want to see this like true Hawaiian JDM style. What? 
Oh, that is so beautiful. That is unbelievable. Got some techno toy stuff here. I don't know, it's just a, it, I can't really quite put my finger on it. It's, it's a different style from what I've seen before. I mean, like you got these fender mirrors that I'm sure you made custom. And so the theme kind of runs throughout the car. Just beautiful. What do you do with this? You just cruise with this? Yeah, or? cruise around the island. It has factory AC, so it's nice and cool when it's hot out here. Basically, none of these cars have AC, it seems like, but it's cool that you have the factory AC and it still works. The interior, everything is just... And you have the same theme, kind of same flower pattern going. Oh, and the cigarette lighter too. Oh, I love it. I love it. It seems like the way you built it, it's very usable. Right? It's not too low, not too flashy, but it's just different enough where if you knew, I mean, if you knew what this was, you'd see it and you know it's something special. Exactly. And a lot of people call this car the unicorn because it's the, you know, so the rarity of the car and whatnot. So again, having a right-hand driver in Hawaii, especially when people see me driving this, they freak out that I'm on the opposite side. That's so cool. My favorite parts about this car. It says it's missing its ETC car, right? Yeah. yeah. That's so cool. I love yeah. that. Here at the show, walking around, got my buddy Greg. Greg here, <laughs> who picked up some goodies from Nissan, right? Or from Japan. Yep. Oh. Tommy cars, Kit Kats. <gasps> this is so cool. This is for me? Yeah. What? No way! See, look, what? there you go. This is my car! There it is. Well, I mean, my car is a replica of the 432 or, or inspiration from that. There you so, go. That's so cool. Wow, thank you so much. You're I appreciate welcome. it. Thank that's you for definitely, coming. That's definitely going on my shelf. We've got the two Hachis here. What's up, guys? What's your name? I'm Jesse. What's up, Jesse? Jeff. My name is Jeff. Jeff? Yep. What is this? Show me what you've done to this thing. Uh, well, most of the things I've done to this car, you can't even really see unless we lift it. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's mostly suspension. Everything is pretty much techno toy tuning. Oh, cool. Yeah. Shout out to those guys. I have yeah. techno toy on my Z. Funny fact, I actually run A86 shocks, front shocks in both front and rear of my 240Z. I love that uh, you have a baby seat in here. This is like a true mark of a, uh, of a man who wants to drive his car all the time. Yeah, and it's, so I guess it was a bad idea to pull out the AC <laughs> instead of fixing it. Shout out to Frederick Osbo for that old hold stump sticker. Very nice. So you guys pretty much do all your own work here. Yeah, basically. These cars are they're old and simple. That's what I like about them. You know, there's no real tricks to working on them. Hey, and shout out to Antonio, 86 Fest right there. Cool. Hi, Antonio. Hi. All right, let's check out the 11 here. I love these front ends. Let's check out the motor here. Ooh. Yeah, so Jesse pretty much put this motor together after being at the machine shop for four months. Yeah, yeah. four months four to months. turn that motor around. Very cool. What about the interior? Interior is basically stock. The fact that you can keep the stock interior in such good condition is a big plus. Like that is tough yeah. in itself. Well, I'm gonna check out some more cars here at the show. Thanks for showing me your cars, guys. 